Okay. Get no talking. Computer's down. We're paying attention. Put computer flaps down, please. All technology away. <coughs> paying attention. Okay. Many of you might not know what LGBT stands for. LGBT is the acronym for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. There's a LGBT group here at Kent Stark. During the conclusion of this presentation, uh, we will explore this group a little bit more. These LGBT groups are starting to become more prominent. This presentation is to inform you about the elements of LGBT. The first letter, L, stands for lesbianism. Courtney will be giving us more information about lesbianism. Thank you, Brian. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of lesbians, the Stonewall Movement as regards to lesbians, as well as people joining the movement. According to Dr. Bonnie Morris of George Washington University, all throughout the 60s and 70s, lesbians could be locked up for a psychiatric evaluation in a psych ward, and they could be there for months to years at a time. Um, they had many, many therapies that they would put them through, such as electroshock therapy. Um, they could do lobotomies on them, which they would try to pick away a part of the brain. A lot of times that resulted in death, as well as they could show them basically lesbian porn and give them something that when they were watching it, it made them throw up so they didn't have those tendencies to want to go after other females. A lot of this was cruel and unusual, but at the time, it was considered an illness or a disease. In 1965, the first lesbian rights movement took place in Washington, D.C. In 1970, the gay liberation movement made lesbians really mad because they felt like they were being out outsiders mm -hmm. as well as unincluded from something that they were so much a very part of. This made them affiliate with more women's rights organizations, such as the National Organization of Women. Within that time frame, Stonewall was also happening. According to Lionel Wright, June 28, 1969, in Greenwich, New York, police raided a gay and lesbian bar, causing a huge riot. Seven plainclothes detectives walked into the bar and demanded that people show them paperwork, anything, to prove their age, what they were selling. People got defensive. Police would throw them in the back of a car, handcuff them, and put them in prison, while other bars who were not gay and lesbian bars were getting away as they did not have detectives constantly going in and out. The whole Stonewall situation was just mass chaos. Not one specific thing was happening to one specific person. It affected everyone. September 21st, 1955, the Daughters of Belitis started, and by the end of Stonewall, they were the first lesbian rights organization that was recognized in the United States. After Stonewall, Belitis was first of many people and organizations joining the LGBT movement. According to a survey done by Swank and Foz, minority groups in colleges were the first to actually become part of LGBT movement. A lot of them figured they had nothing else to lose. They are already looked down upon being minority groups that why not affiliate themselves with a greater cause that they thought to be bigger than themselves. It was a lot easier for them to do this because they didn't deal with the same struggles as say a white male who was heterosexual going and saying I'm going to stand up for gay, lesbian, bisexual rights. Another study done by Rebecca Herrick showed legislators joining the movement after a statement made by Sally Kearns, an Oklahoma representative in the U.S. Senate, in 2008. This is what Sally had to say. Studies show that no society that has totally embraced homosexuality lasted, you know, a few decades. So, it's the death knell of this country. I honestly think it's the biggest threat our nation has even more so than terrorists in Islam. Personally, this really got under my skin, and every time I read it or look at it, it just really irritates me. I think I have an aunt who is a lesbian, and I just think about being in her shoes and having someone say that, that I was more of a threat to the United States than terrorists who 
cause 9-11 or the Islamic race, which personally I don't find that their race affects our country because of few, but that's a different story. It's this whole view of heteronormativity, which is the assumption that there's only one type of sexuality. People, it causes people to hide their identities because they don't want people to know that they're lesbians, gay, whatever. Actually, this afternoon when we were downstairs practicing for our speech, as soon as people heard that it was an LGBT speech, an older woman behind us started blasting gospel music. And if that's not heteronormativity, I don't really know what is. It also causes people to avoid topics that would out them, per se. When talking with Dr. Weber, she told us of someone who, she avoided company picnics because she didn't want to be asked, hey, what'd you do this weekend? She avoided certain topics regarding anything gay or lesbian because she didn't want to come off as defending them. Shortly after states heard what Sally had to say, they started legalizing same-sex marriage, and today, 14 states have it legalized. While lesbians and gays are often grouped together, they are very, very different groups. And Liz will talk to you about the gay portion of LGBT. Today I'll be telling you a little bit about gay history, um, gay marriage, and gay adoptions, also the public opinions in different groups about gays. First, I'm going to start off with the history. In 1997, President Jefferson proposed that castration be the punishment for homosexuality. Even though that it seems extreme, before the punishment was death. They used many types of capital punishment, such as hanging, beheading, stoning, and flogging. In 1951, there was the first gay rights group. Its name, it was called the Medicine Society. And according to Head, in 1969, there was the Stonewall Riots, which Courtney talked about, the raid of the gay bar, which has been known as the turning point in gay rights. In 1973, the American Psychiatric Association declared that homosexuality was no longer a disease, and they realized that homophobia might actually be the problem, and they decided to speak out against discrimination. In the 1980s, the Democratic National Convention supported the gay rights movement. Finally, by 2003, all of the sodomy laws, which outlawed um, sex between same sex in still 14 states, were finally struck down by the Supreme Court. And now we're making huge leaps towards equality. Now 14 states and Washington, D.C. extend marriage rights to same-sex couples. Gay marriage is a union between two same-sex people. With marriage comes many financial, government, and health benefits, according to Marriage Equality USA. They, marriage Equality USA said that they offer 1,138 federal benefits and responsibilities, along with hundreds more given by state governments. It also shows that people who are married live a longer and healthier life, and also protects their children when their parents are in matrimony. 55% of the public supports gay marriage, while 44% opposes and 2% are unsure. The support keeps rising. And now, in 14 states, they now recognize gay marriage according to Reuters. These states include Massachusetts, Connecticut, Iowa, Vermont, New Hampshire, Washington, D.C., New York, Washington, Maine, Maryland, Rhode Island, Delaware, Minnesota, and California. Along with marriage, always come, sometimes comes <coughs> the desire for children. Legal adoptions for gay couples started in the 1990s. And in 2000, 22% of the gay couples were raising a child up to the age of 18. In 2004, the American Psycho Psychological Association gave its support for the upbringing 
and adoption of children with the same sex parents along with the American Medical Association, Medical Association hoping to eliminate any equality for children that have same sex parents in health care. Also, there is estimated to be about 1 million heterosexual fathers according to Solo Divinok and Shnabako. <coughs> People's main concern with adoption for same-sex parents was that the children would grow up with the same sexual tendencies as their parents. This was proven false, and the large majority of <coughs> children studied showed all the classic heterosexual tendencies. Adoption law and regulations are generally based on public opinions. Now I'm going to talk to you about public opinions by group. Generally, females have more support for gays other than males. Swartz on page 750 said, Herrick explained that many heterosexual experience, experience same-sex attractions and become anxious because of homosexuality, stigmatized status in society. Additionally, being homosexuality, if often associated with gender inversion, heterosexuals are fearful of being labeled homosexual because such a label might suggest that they are not real men or women. For these reasons, some heterosexuals adopt homophobic attitudes <coughs> to ensure themselves and others that they are not homosexual. People who are non-religious support gays much more and people with higher educations are shown to support them also. Also, liberals have always been more involved with the gay rights than conservatives, according to Swartz. Now I'll be handing off the presentation to Brian so he can talk about the B in LGBT. Thank you. <coughs> um, the B in B and LGBT stands for bisexuality. My goal is to inform you more about this topic, uh, discuss some of the history, learn a little bit more about Stonewall, uh, some of the rights that bisexuals are fighting for, and share a personal story. Bisexuality is commonly defined as one who is romantically or sexually attracted to members of both sexes. According to Harper Douglas, the term was coined in the 19th century. Someone who's, who is bisexual has both gay and straight tendencies. A little bit more about Stonewall. Um, as it was stated earlier, anti-sodomy laws were according to the Gay Rights Movement website, repealed in all 32 states in 2003 as an indirect result uh, of Stonewall. One of the things that people might not know about Stonewall is prior to that time, if gay men wanted to have relationships, they would have to go into like abandoned meat trucks to, to uh, have sex. Bisexuality itself does not have a specific origin because most men who consider themselves heterosexual have had at least one homosexual experience in their lifetime. Bisexual activist Robin Ox defines bisexuality as the potential to be attracted romantically and or sexually to people of more than one sex and or gender, not necessarily at the same time, not necessarily in the same way, and not necessarily in the same degree. According to Iser Shuri, the term bisexual and pansexual are sometimes used interchangeably. And according to Alasia and Elia, bisexuality is not rec re recognized excuse me, to the same degree as gay or lesbianism. Bisexual <coughs> people are often invisible in, in uh, mainstream American society. Bisexuals can face prejudice even amongst gays and lesbians. How do I know? I am a victim of this prejudice. I myself am bisexual. I'm what you would consider straight bisexual. What this means is that romantically I prefer either partner 
But as far as a long-term re relationship, I mostly prefer women. Um, as a man and a bisexual, I face the cold fact that gays and lesbians are more widely socially acceptable. Also, I have to deal with the fact that female bisexuality is more widely acceptable than male bisexuality. Um, as an example, from my own personal history, recently there was a blood drive here at the campus down at the student center. And I was asked to participate in that blood drive, but when I filled out the forms, I was not allowed to donate blood and save a life because of my bisexuality. However, on that same form, there was nothing barring a female who was bisexual from donating blood. Another thing I'm personally fighting for, and this was something that um, Elizabeth had mentioned, was that a lot of times I'm seen as bisexual and not masculine. I'm seen as bisexual and effeminate, and this is not the case at all. Being bisexual does not make me less of a man. Next, we're going to have Alex continue with the presentation by talking about transgender. A lot of people are actually not really sure about the true definition of transgender. And it is actually used in term to describe the transition from one gender to a different gender identity that someone partakes. Gender does not actually assign a, or transgender does not actually assign a sexual orientation, as many are heterosexual, homosexual, and even bisexual. Quite often, biological factors may be the cause of trans transgenderism or even transsexualism. And this happens by the brain developing different structures at birth and early development. Examples of this would be the body develops a, as a certain sex and the brain develops as a different gender as stated by the psychiatry and clinical neuroscience. Also, transgender does not necessarily refer to transsexualism or cross-dressing. Prior to 1800, native tribes had third gender rules. Men who had feminine characteristics of course, not all Native American tribes had these third gender roles. Lucy Ann Lobdell, born in 1829, lived as a man for 60 years as Joseph Lobdell and was, was eventually incarcerated in an insane asylum for living as a man. Many Civil War women dressed as men and fought during the Civil War. And even afterward, many of those women still lived as men. Sweden was actually the first country to legalize transsexual surgery in 1972. The Stonewall riots began in 1969, and lesbian and gays and even bisexuals actually did not accept their fight for rights during this time. In the 50s and 60s, people began fighting for their rights that were transgendered in America. And in 1965, at Dewey's Coffee Shop in Philadelphia, people protested for not <coughs> getting service. There were a few that did not leave, and as a result, they were all arrested. Among them was a black male. Due to his arrest, LGBT was officially established as a worthy cause in the black community. The first riot of people, of transgender people, took place in 1969 in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco. In New York in 2010, Governor David Patterson passed the first legislation to protect transgender people in the workplace. Um, to conclude, I hope that you have all learned something today on LGBT. The rights that each group is fighting for, and a little specifics about each group. Most importantly, we want everyone to understand that being gay, lesbian, 
bisexual, or transgender does not make anyone less of a person. Now, as mentioned before, I will introduce actually two groups here at Kent. At the main campus, we have Pride Kent, and here at the Stark campus, we have Spectrum. Both are considered LGBTQA groups. What is LGBTQA? LGBTQA stands for lesbian, gay, bisex bisexual, transgender, questioning, and allies. Both of these groups are available to provide answers for people who are both dealing with the stigma attached to homosexuality and people who are questioning their own sexuality. It is also a safe place for people who are heterosexual and supportive of the LGBT movement to express their support. Both groups can be found in the KSU web page or on Facebook. Uh, we thank you for your time and we hope that you got a lot out of this experience.